Sometimes he tries to roll the weight right here. Go to, the, go to his belly. Right here. I can stop him right here. And I can begin to overhook here. And then it's super pop. I just don't want to torque his knees. But the bottom line is that if you guys can see here, okay, he can't get his foot out. Okay? And if I really want, I can even push this one in that way and grab a toe, separate it. <laughs> but the point is, is that his legs are stuck. And the key is this. You're right over left and you're pinching here and pulling in so that this knee can't slide back up over that one. Right here, because if he slides, if this is loose and that goes away, he can turn this foot and turn away. Yes, and I don't want him to do that, okay? So this is all off of back steps. But here I said, I'll pop my knee back in. So look, right here, you gotta clear the seat. You cut one, Two, three, right here. And I prefer you guys stay seated on him, okay? And I wanna grab the shin. I need to expose his right foot right here while this hand is on his outside knee here and I'm still sitting on it. I found that if I sit back, it's too easy for him to come up or, because his hands are free and he could pull me back down. So from here, I wanna put this leg on like a boot right here or like a knee pad right here, okay? Here. Like you slide in, bring your left leg over here, right leg over here. My options, I can sit back or I can go to my side. In all honesty, the side is better, but for now we'll sit back. So I'm gonna do a here, okay? And I'm gonna pull him up a little bit, here. And I'm gonna stop him on his side or right about here, okay? I pull the direction of my, of his toes, okay? Sometimes you can often get it where you go belly down. So the key here is your knee cut and you gotta beat that back knee. The second that I'm in this position, I gotta beat the back knee because here's kind of a shield, I can't back step here. So if I can beat this knee here, one, two, three, okay? And I want to sit here. Sometimes, if it's loose enough, I can push the knee through. In no gi, it's easier to push this leg through. But because of the friction, I want to go a little bit lower on that ankle. Flip my elbow open. Slide my hip in here. One, two. And now I can just go here, look. Mm -hmm. And back to right here. Here it's even worse because he has literally no chance to turn it to this. And it's so locked in, it's so super tight. It's fantastic. The key here is this. One, two, three. Look, if I'm already here, look. I'd rather just go here and finish it right here, okay? Because here, there's, there's literally no way for him to get out. Even if he sits up, nothing. You'll finish this before he can begin to do anything. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do, practice that back step. So you're here, knee cut. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> you can sit on your butt, but lean forward, so you can just push this leg through here, pull the left leg over right, and then pull him up, and stop him right there, as everything tightens up here, so you can reach this seat here. Okay, because I don't want him to roll neither to his belly, neither to his back. Your leg here would stop his rotation? Correct. This right here, because this is locking his knee. Mm -hmm. He can't turn away, because he can only turn away as far mm -hmm. as he can open his knee. He can go to his belly, but if he does that, I can anticipate it. Everybody belly? Yeah, because here, I would just 
push them all, push them all, push them all, because I got his knees pretty locked up here, okay? And then from here you have the overhook, but it's all still based off of controlling that foot. And the rotation of the foot, if he changes the rotation, okay, then it breaks the opposite so legs in the direction of the toes. So if I go here, I like to be able to control the foot so he can rotate it in a minimal capacity. And everything is here super tight. And it's like I push this foot forward to lock his calf to my knee so he can't flip it back over and re-rotate, okay? So what I want you guys to practice is just that back step. One, two, three, four, five. Good question. Yeah. You're exactly what I want to ask. When you're doing the back step, are you taking a pause to sit on his leg to secure a position or are you just back stepping? If I can, you want to eliminate all the pauses. The okay. pauses don't do anything for you except give you an opportunity to think. The more you can just react and flow into it, the more powerful it all becomes. It's like you're going to punch and you're going, you know what I'm saying? It's much better if you just swing at it, okay? So as you hear, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's see, there'll be eight. Did you eight? Maybe that's what I call it. <laughs> I don't know. But, <clears throat> whenever this happens, look, and you need to reach under, right here. Sit back, put this on like a knee pad. And then this elbow opens this a little bit. You need to just expose the foot. If you grab too low here and he crosses his feet, it's gonna be hard to expose it. And you finish, okay? I want that back step, that's the key. Five hands each. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I would say if you can get that back step down, bring it that way, you can be And you do it all in one continuous motion. But just get that, that fluidity down. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I missed the step, but whatever. Okay. You get it. Because you don't have to wait. You don't have to be all like. And then go. You can literally, you know that the second you are going here and sit on him here and control. I just want to expose that foot, okay? Because sometimes this becomes even a better alternative to go more belly down, okay? So five times each, one, two, three. Let's count it out. Is the, is the figure four? Is, is, that, is that turning into a cat saucer? No, you, you don't.